welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to add a camera to a Raspberry Pi before installing some software called Motion iOS to turn it into a motion controlled surveillance system. And if you think that this sounds very exciting, it is, so let's go and get started. Right, in this video I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi camera and a Raspberry Pi 3, which as you can see I've got mounted on a little board. Now, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, but I should point out you can use any version of the Raspberry Pi for what I'm doing here, at least any version with a camera connector. That means any Raspberry Pi other than the very first Raspberry Pi 0. But if you want to follow through precisely what I'm doing, you'll need a Raspberry Pi with both Ethernet and a Wi-Fi on it, which means a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Plus. Now, the Raspberry Pi camera, in case you're not aware of it, is a module that's been made available for some time for the Raspberry Pi. This is now version 2.1. This costs about $30 or £24. And as you might be able to see, I bought this from a Pi Moroni, where it came with an adjustable mount inside. So let's open the thing up. But uh, before we do, just to point out that cameras are very static sensitive. And therefore, I am actually wearing here a, a static wristband, which is connected through to a very large metal object off camera. So anyway, let's get inside. We are, I think, getting best at the bottom of this thing, as far as I can make out. We just do that, and uh, always is exciting. Um, oh, there's a instructions. Must be something else. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes, anti-static bag. Oh, there's the mount look, which we'll, uh, I'm sure, look at in a second. And inside here, we've got the, uh, the camera, which, uh, as I say, handle very carefully because of static. But uh, let's get the thing out, and uh, there we are. There we have the, uh, the Raspberry Pi camera. And as you can see, it's a tiny little thing. The board itself is only about uh, 20 millimeters square, and it's connected through to this ribbon cable through to the connector end here, which will connect onto the Raspberry Pi's camera connector. And because it's so sensitive, it's because it's a very tricky device to work with, I think it's a very good idea to have a mount. So uh, I'll bring in here, this is a little uh, mount case of all the parts from a Pi Moroni, which I'm sure is a simple thing. So we'll open all this up by the magic of filmmaking. And uh, here we are, we've got a couple of bits of a Perspex, various nuts and bolts, to make a little mount for the, the Pi camera. So I'm going to put all that together, and uh, here we are, you can see the camera is now held securely in place. If we look around the back, you see the circuit board is just bolted in with the four little nuts and bolts, and the whole thing is held down with uh, two little blobs of blue tack to hold it onto my baseboard. And as I should have said earlier, this is a pretty decent camera. This is an 8 megapixel camera. It'll record up to 3280 by 2464 stills. And it'll record video at 1080p at 30 frames a second, 720p at 60 frames a second, or 480p at 90 frames a second. So the only thing I'm left to do now is I need to take the ribbon cable here and connect it into the connector on the Pi. To do that, we need to lift this piece of plastic out of the way. And then just to take the cable, you'll notice the cable has got its connectors facing us here, so facing away from the Ethernet connector. They go drop down there, and that locks in place by just pushing that down. And then the cable is now securely connected onto the Pi. And so if I just nip in here and very carefully remove the uh, little cover piece from the front of the camera, the little lens cover, come off your little swine. There we are, the camera is now fully exposed to be used. And so if I now connect up the Pi, adding the usual cables, we can test if our camera works. Right, with everything connected up, after I boot it into Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi, I should say you don't have to boot into Raspbian and do what I'm about to do now if you want to set up Motion iOS, but it's a good idea, I think, to check things are working. So if you want to get the Pi camera working in Raspbian, what you need to do is first of all, go into Preferences and look at a Pi configuration and check that the Pi's camera is enabled under Interfaces. It is enabled here. If it wasn't, you'd have to click Enabled and then reboot the Pi, but it's okay for me here. And we can access the camera in a simple way using a, a command called Raspi Still, Raspberry Pi Still. As you can see here, this is the syntax. Uh, it tells it to take a picture to uh, here, the home Pi directory, pictures directory, test JPEG. So if we just press Enter, we will hopefully see, oh yes, the camera can see something. It can see cameras and monitors. It can see thing itself, and it's just giving us a preview, and then that'll have finished. And if we look back to the uh, directory where it's taken the picture, test job hug is there. If we open that, presumably, there we are, there's our picture. Now, you might have noticed, because you're probably highly observant today, that that picture is actually upside down, which is not terribly good. But fortunately, we can uh, fix that in software. So if we just go to uh, another command, which is that one 
there, which is the same command, but here I'm putting in the uh, tags to give it a vertical flip and a horizontal flip before it takes the picture. So effectively that will turn it through 180 degrees. So if we run that, oh yes, it looks much better the right way up, doesn't it? And uh, uh, things seem to be working okay. And it'll take the picture and uh, there we are. If we look back, it'll obviously overwrite our previous file and hopefully this will now be a, a bit better. Um, the picture doesn't look brilliant, probably because the objects you can see are very close to the camera. It's a fixed focus camera, but you can focus the lens to the distance you want by twisting a thing on the front of it. I've not bothered to do that for this test, but clearly the thing is working. So anyway, we proved the camera works okay with the Raspberry Pi. It's now time to get the Motion iOS software and install it on an SD card. Right, here I am on the uh, GitHub page for Motion iOS, which is the Linux distribution we're going to use in the rest of this video. And as you can see, Motion iOS is a video surveillance system for single board computers, which has been very kindly created and, and supplied for us to use by a, a guy called Callin Crisson. If you want to know a bit more about it, you can look in the wiki and there's all sorts of information it tells you about what I've just basically told you. Uh, and you can make a donation if you want for using this uh, pretty amazing software. Anyway, right now I'm going to just get on with the downloads. So we'll go to releases and you'll see in releases it's available for lots of different single board computers, Banana Pies, Odroids, etc. But I want the version for the Raspberry Pi 3, which is the version down here. So I'll click on that and we'll save that to uh, my appropriate download directory. And uh, with the download complete, I'm going to flick across to Etcher, which we've already got running. So we'll select the image in Etcher. We want, uh, there it is there. And uh, it's already set up to write to our SD card, which I put into this machine. So I'll click on Flash, and it'll write this to the SD card to be used in the Raspberry Pi. Yes, Windows, we want to do it. Don't you get annoyed by Windows and its messages so much of the time. And uh, there we are, it's complete. Windows is getting confused again. No, we do not want to reformat the disk I've just uh, written the image to. Uh, we're all finished now, and so we can now put that to our Raspberry Pi and run up Motion iOS. Right, I've now put the micro SD card containing Motion iOS into our Raspberry Pi, which as you can see is now hooked up just to power and Ethernet to function as a headless device which we'll access across the network. So we'll turn it on and we'll go across to a Windows PC which we'll use to access it. And the first thing we need to do is to find out its IP address. And we could do that looking in the control panel for our router, but I'm going to use a piece of a software called Angry IP Scanner, which I've used on this channel before. And of course, I'll give you a link for this and indeed for Etcher, which I just used in the video description. So I'm going to scan between about 192.168.10, 192.168.1, about say 30. That's probably where its local address is going to be. If we scan my network, we'll see that, uh, yes, it's sitting on a 192.168.1.6. And if I flick across to a web browser, I've anticipated that address. If I put it in, there we are. You'll see we can now access a Motion iOS across the network. And in fact, you can log in with no credentials whatsoever. We just press log in. And if I do that, yes, we can see the camera. It's upside down still. We can fix that later, but the thing is clearly working. I can put my hand in there. Um, yes, things, things are clearly operating. Uh, there are some controls over here, but not, not many because we're logged in without any, any big serious credentials. So I'm going to go and log in as administrator, which is admin. And there's no password on admin when you first set the system up. I, of course, would advise you to set an administrator password. And if we do that, we get the same view, but we've got loads and loads of settings. And indeed, if we go down to advanced settings, we've got even more settings. I'll apply that. and. Uh, this is really a fantastic piece of software. It is very intuitive to use for accessing a camera or indeed multiple cameras across a network. Here we've plugged the Raspberry Pi's own camera into a Raspberry Pi. You can plug in USB webcams into a Raspberry Pi and normally they do work in, in this software. You can have multiple cameras if you really want. But the only camera I find is absolutely guaranteed to work is a Raspberry Pi camera. But most USB cameras with a bit of messing around sometimes will work in Motion iOS. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the settings here. Uh, not least, I think we need to sort out that video device itself, the camera. Let's change its resolution to say uh, 1280 by 720. Let's uh, rotate it 180 degrees and let's maybe take its frame rate up to about 25 frames a second. Let's apply that. And uh, there we are. And uh, I'm now bringing my hand in and uh, yes, that's now giving us a pretty good uh, 
vision, isn't it? You can see my hand doing all sorts of not very exciting things. Uh, of course, we are streaming from a Raspberry Pi 3, remember, which only has 100 megabit ethernet, so we've got a bit of a constrained bandwidth on that connection. But the great thing about this software, it doesn't just allow you to access a camera across the network, it allows you to trigger recording from that camera using motion. So uh, we go down here, we've got motion detection, which you'll see is activated by default. And you can set all sorts of things inside here about how it decides motion has happened, how much of a frame has changed, etc. Let's just chuck that up a little bit, actually. It's a reasonable amount of change in a frame to make a motion detection. And then uh, once that's set up, we can also turn on motion detection for movies and still images. So let's turn it on for still images. Capture mode, um, motion triggered. Uh, we'll do that. And uh, we'll also go and uh, apply that. Why not? Always remember to apply settings or they won't work. And uh, we'll also turn it on for movies. There we are, we'll capture movies based on motion, and we'll capture movies of, say, uh, I don't know, seven seconds long. It could be any length you want, but for testing, seven seconds is fine. And I should point out, you can store your files either on the Pi itself, um, or you can store them across the network on, on, say, a NAS drive or something. It's got lots and lots of really good options here. And as you can see, you can tell it to keep movies for a certain length of time to save on storage space, etc. But that's now uh, set up. So in theory, this could be sitting on my network, and if I now go and cause some motion, um, which hopefully has triggered things on, on the camera, and that hopefully will record for what we say about a seven seconds we said. And you'll see if you click on a camera, you'll see it comes up with various options. You can full screen it if you want to, but you can also see its pictures or its um, uh, movies. So if we click on that, there are some pictures recorded. Clearly my hand triggered multiple picture recordings, and we can actually view these pictures, we can download these pictures. It really is a very easy to use system. Have we got any video recorded? Hopefully we have. It did it trigger that. Yes, it triggered lots of it, or maybe set a bit too sensitive then, but uh, there we are, there's various movies recorded. So let's again try that and uh, play that back. Not very exciting. That one obviously recorded after my hand came in. Didn't keep... Let's try the first one, see what that one looks like. Yes, that's the end of my, my hand, but you get the principle. We're recording movies onto the device and then accessing later on using uh, um, the, the, the browser. It really is a very, very good system. I really do like MotionEye OS. Now, of course, at the moment, we are tied to a wired Ethernet lead, but you can use this thing across a wireless network. So I'm going to think a little bit about that. If you go to a network and a wireless network will turn that on. And I can put in here, therefore, my, the name of my network and my, my wireless key. I'm not going to show you what those are, but I'm going to put those in now. And I would point out if you want to use Motion iOS on, say, a Raspberry Pi Zero, which doesn't have an Ethernet connector, that is possible because you can put in a configuration file the details of your network. I'll give you a link in the video description for doing that as well. Anyway, I'm not going to put my details in for the wireless network. I will then close this thing down properly using shutdown and we'll come back and we'll have an entirely wireless Motion Eye setup. Guess what? I'm now back again, and I've not only set this thing up for Wi-Fi, I've made a few changes to the configuration of the board. You can see this has lost the Ethernet lead because, of course, it's connected via Wi-Fi, but it's also got its power coming from a USB power bank, which I've connected in. This is, I think, a 2,100 milliamp uh, unit, probably gives a couple of hours of power. And uh, if we flick across to Ocean iOS, you can see this thing is live because uh, we can get some fascinating shots of the the table and things, it actually clearly works. I've taken off motion capture while this is going on. What I'm now going to do, I think, is try to take this outside to see if we can get some better images on the camera. So I'll just go and do that. And uh, there we are. The camera's now transmitting from the garden. So it's, uh, if we go back in and turn back on uh, motion detection. OK, that hopefully will, will work. And uh, what I'm going to do now, you can probably guess, I'm going to go outside and see if I can actually trigger this thing to take some images. So uh, let's see if we can get that to work. See you in a second. And uh, here I am back again. I've brought the camera back inside. As you can see, it's looking exciting things on the table. But hopefully we've got some films in here. And yet, oh, we have look. So we can, hopefully that has worked. And uh, that was the wrong film, wasn't it? That's the one we want. There we are. Look, and uh, 
well, that's me walking around outside. I, I assumed the camera would have a very narrow field of view. It clearly doesn't. I should have worked that one out. I didn't have to squat down so you can see my face. Never mind, but clearly, clearly that worked, didn't it? And uh, that's another one, presumably. And, uh, and also, yes, you can see me walking away. So if you wanted to, uh, to uh, surveil people, you could use this system. And if we, presumably if we download that, we can get a thing onto our PC. And uh, there we are. And yes, it'll play back in, uh, in Windows. The, the quality isn't bad. It was set to a 720p, wasn't it? This is, this is not bad at all, is it? Raspberry Pi camera recorded uh, wirelessly uh, using, uh, using Motion iOS. I'm very impressed with this. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really like Motion iOS. The Raspberry Pi camera is a fantastic peripheral that opens up all kinds of maker possibilities. And indeed, in a future video, I'll be adding a Raspberry Pi camera to the front of this, my Raspberry Pi Zero controlled Devastator robot. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.